Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is NZXT, or if you're American, NZXT Q2. This is an RGB lighting kit for PC gamers. Uh, you can attach to the back of your monitor or to the inside of your gaming machine. And it's quite interesting because it's ambient RGB lighting, but also has a number of different settings which make it slightly different to Philips Hue and flexible in different ways. It also uh, comes with strips that are magnetic and 3M sticky backed, so you have a choice of how to install them. Um, you could theoretically install them with inside a PC case quite easily. Uh, it runs via the CAM software, which is the company's own software, which actually works to give you data and stats on your computer, including your current clock speed and your CPU and uh, temperatures and things like that, as well as being able to control the colors, which I'll show you in a bit more depth in a minute. Now, this is an unboxing video, but also a brief overview to show you what it's like, what it's like to install, how it works and what it's like compared to the competition. As you can see in the background of this video, I already have some RGB light strips. Uh, you'll see some white strips in the background. That's Philips Hue lights back there. I've also done Razer's offering and um, Corsair's internal PC ones as well. Uh, most of these lights are quite similar in their design. They're basically strips of LEDs. I believe you get 10 lights per strip. This one's interesting because it comes with four of each long and short ones and it's compatible with a variety of different monitors. Inside the box you get the control box which is where you basically plug the uh, lights into your computer, into the power supply and then connect them up to get their source of power so that they can light up. And here are the LED strips themselves. The system is Fairly decent actually. The Razer one I saw didn't have, wasn't uh, as quite as flexible in terms of the number of cables it had. So this one works quite well. Now for reference, I'm installing this on an Asus 34-inch ultra-wide gaming monitor. It is compatible with other gaming monitors, and you'll see later in the video I'll show you that they include some references in there to suggest the way to set them up. Also, it comes with a variety of different power outlet plugs, which is always ideal because that's one gripe I usually have with this sort of thing, is it comes with an American or a European plug and you need a British one, or vice versa if you're in a different country, I suppose, but this one has it all. You also get a little pack full of stickers, some extension leads which allow you to bend round corners and the micro USB cable for connecting to your computer. Uh, the lights will work without connecting to the computer but obviously they won't change colour. You'll only have uh, white as default which I'll show you when I plug it in. But you need to connect to your computer and use the Q software, uh, the CAM software sorry, to, in order to be able to change the colours. And it's interesting in that it doesn't just change colours like Q lights, Philips Hue lights do. These ones actually um, can go through the various RGB colours much like a keyboard or RGB fans on your computer. So there's a variety of different modes to select from. Um, they're quite ridiculous actually, but you can do it by a channel basis. And to give you an idea, there's a fixed colour, so you can go for various fixed colours. Breathing, fading, marquee. Pulse, Spectrum Wave, altern Alternating, Wings, Starry Night, Rainbow Flow, Super Rainbow, Rainbow Pulse. You can also set it to highlight depending on the CPU temperature, GPU temperature, ambient temperature, FPS of the game you're playing. You can set it to react to audio like music and in-game sounds. And it also has profile settings for games, although it does only seem to cover CSGO for some reason, but that includes C4 arming health and grenade effects. So there's various different presets and numerous different effects within the colour scheme which make it pretty appealing and quite interesting. Watch now and enjoy as I have trouble with the simplest of things trying to put this plug together. It's actually remarkably simple when you know what you're doing. I was trying to force it in from the bottom and it just clips in, in the middle. <laughs> The, as I said, there's a micro USB to USB connector which connects the box to your computer. 
And that's a pretty long cable, actually. Both the power cable and that micro USB cable stretched nicely across my desk. You can see I've got quite a big desk because the 34 inch monitor goes usually on the far left and uh, has another monitor next to it. And those those cables have managed to stretch all the way across the other side of the desk, which I'm quite happy with. So it's not restrictive in that way. There are some niggles, which I'll get to in a bit. This is the control box, it's pretty simple. You just plug in your cables there and connect the lights to it. You don't need to complete a full circuit in order to light up all these lights either. So if you look at the instructions and the box actually, you can see that they basically do L shapes. So you have two L shapes. Uh, you go across the top and then down the side and that's one channel and then across the bottom and up the other side and that's another channel. And that's the easiest way of setting it up because otherwise it becomes very fiddly. The problem with these LED light strips is you can't bend them. You need that little bit connector to go between the two and there's connecting cables for doing just that. The flow of electricity also has to go in the right way so you can see each of the cables has a little arrow on it to help you along. But my recommendation for this is if you purchase it definitely worth testing out and plugging it all in before you get started peeling off the sticky back plastic to install it on your monitor because if you get it wrong you end up losing the stick on those strips and then you can't get them to stick down which can be very frustrating and I've had that experience before with others it's a quite a common problem actually it's very frustrating so just to give you an idea of what their lights look like when they're plugged in a standard you can see straight away I've got it the wrong way around and you need power from it as well. You can't just power it from your computer, so you do have to have it plugged into the mains as well as plugged into your computer to be able to change the colors. Okay, as I said, the power cable has nice length to it, which is quite good. Nothing worse than having this sort of thing and then the cables just aren't long enough to be able to stretch. So this is what it looks like when it's plugged in. As I said, I've not taken the sticky back plastic off of the sticking tape. I wanted to get and uh, make sure I was knew how to set it up. They're pretty simple. It's basically four pins that connect between them. So you can see here, those just slot in. You do need to be careful because if any of those pins get broken, it won't work anymore. Um, with standard power without the software and turned on and installed it just lights up white and it is actually very bright I was quite impressed uh, you'll see in a bit during the daytime even the lights actually show up really well uh, in all the surrounding zones of the monitor as a as you can probably see from this video as well there is a slight magnetism to these strips they stick together nicely but that's great because that means you can install them with inside a pc case if you've got a metal case you can easily just snap them on without having to worry about the sticky back plastic i was a bit concerned about putting slight magnetization on the back of my monitor but i think it's very faint and to be honest it's quite thick there is a bit of fiddling to work out which way around these things go and I've had a few times where they just didn't work because I've got the cables the wrong way around. But you can see it does have an arrow system which points you in the right direction once you've tested it out a few times you get a hang of it. It's important to work out the logic of these things before you get started though. They use 3M stickers on the back so you just peel off the backing and then stick it down. However I have found and more than once with these sorts of things that the stick on those 3M stickers is just not strong enough to keep the cables on. If there's any amount of tension or weight pulling down on it they will come off. So now taking a look at the back of the monitor you can see it's got a lot of space but there's also some unusual shapes and difficulty there. Another thing to bear in mind is when you turn the monitor around you can stick this box to the back which then gives less tension to the cables as they're plugged into it which means they're more likely to stay on. One mistake I did make was plugging this all in with the box on the right hand side when actually when I turn the monitor around the box would be on the left hand side so it's worth thinking about how things are going to be reversed when they're actually sitting on your desk as a final product. 
Now these lights are an interesting alternative to Hue and Corsair and Rose's offering. There are quite a different few ones out there, but it's actually fairly good. As I said, there's quite a number of different customization options within the software, which is quite nice to be able to cycle through the various lighting modes, make it slightly more interesting than uh, the Philips Hue lighting, which is generally just a static color, unless you are doing the light sync which I have shown in a previous video that I'll link to in the description, which is very good for gaming, music and movies, which makes the lights react to whatever game you're playing, which is very cool. That's a very good way of doing it. Unfortunately, these lights don't appear to have that offering apart from CSGO, although they do react to sound. So as I said, the option I went for was to stick two of the long strips across the top to try and cover as much as possible. You can't quite cover the whole length, but you can try different setups. There are guides, as I said, within the instructions that su suggest the various setups you can try in order to get them on. Now that I worked out that this is definitely the right way around so that the power will go through and light them up, just stuck those down and then work out where the next one's going to go. Now there's some extensions between the two, which I'll show you in a second, that allow you to go from bending around the corner, because obviously we're going to go down now. You cannot bend the strips. They are not very flexible. But you can get this little extension lead, which basically allows you to bend it around and then go straight down. The shorter strip is the one I want to use for the sides. Because obviously that's the narrower part. Once again, just testing to make sure I've actually put it in the right way around. And that works, but the other one doesn't. So there's a connection problem again. But that'll be at the top. The other thing that this is quite neat comes with a little kit that allows you to clip those wires in place. So you basically can curl this wire around so it's neat and out of the way. And inside the bag, you'll see there is a little clip which allows you to then stick it down to the monitor and keep that out of the way and ensure the cables stay on. Now, these are the suggested configurations that I showed you in the packaging. It shows you you could put the strips across the top and side creating the L shape and again as it is on the box it shows you how to do the loop and how to create L shapes across the top and bottom to get the maximum coverage because obviously you want to cover as much as the back of the monitor as you can because that will light up the surrounding area both your desks and, and the walls behind it only problem I had is because this monitor is curved and textured it makes it very difficult to get these stickers to stay on and they do pop off so you need to make sure you don't waste a stick by putting it in the wrong place can be fiddly you can however buy extra 3m stickers off Amazon if you do have problems which is something I've done with Nanoleaf which is a another lighting system that you might see in the background on the video it's stuck to the wall it has a similar problem some 3M stickers are very strong, and if you try and get them off, then you have to end up replacing them. So a bit further on, this took quite a while to put together, actually. But this is nearly the end result. And instead of going for two long ones on the bottom, I actually went for three of the shorter ones, which actually managed to cover more of it. So it's worth playing around and seeing what's the best way of doing it. I actually feel like getting more light on the bottoms more interesting anyway, because you definitely get more reflection on your desk and then I can put a long one down that edge so this is the final end result this is actually taken at lunchtime so it's quite bright outside but despite that you can still see the lights underneath are very bright both around the sides and the back and the top 
and you can go into the software and make changes so you can have static light so you can have it cycling through you can change it on a channel by channel basis there's a lot of different customization within the software that allows you to make the lights do whatever you want basically as i said there are some game functionalities but it also reacts to music and to your pc so you could make it light up if your computer was getting too hot for example which is thoroughly nerding out and is amazing for uh, you know people that love RGB lighting and I'll think of themselves as PC nerds which gives a lot of flexibility and customization options you can even choose the different colors for different temperature sets within it so for example having it blue at 20 30 and 40 degrees purple at 50 60 and 70 degrees and red at 80 90 and 100 degrees when things are starting to get a bit crazy I'm tested here to see the syncing with music in terms of levels and you can sync that with bass sync uh, and gain as well and that makes for some pretty interesting results there's also some fun colors to cycle through and you could change the speed of these things as well add extra colors in or just have a static color if you don't want a party on your desk So in the end, this is a pretty good RGB lighting strip kit, a good alternative to the other ones out there, and a worthy little purchase. I do wish it had a bit more game sync functionality like Philips Hue, or even synced up with the two so you could combine them and make for a mega lighting. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful. Please like, subscribe, and come back for more in the future. If you hated it, please let me know in the comments because I'm always trying to improve my videos. Thanks very much.